I looked at Usman and he says, go, I don't do dua for you. He says, why? He says, have you seen when you go in the marketplace how many women you eye up? He says, how do you know that? He says, this is wahi. This is a question of wahi. Revelation. Did Allah reveal this upon you? He says, no. Did you not hear the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? اتقوا فراسة المؤمن إنه ينزل بنور الله Fear the insight of a moment for he sees through the light of Allah's word. So maybe you can deduce from this hadith that maybe the Prophet Sallallahu saw this person because Jibreel came and told him. But no, the second part of the hadith tells us how he saw him. He says, Wallahi la yakhfa alayya khushukum wala khushukum. I swear by Allah that I see your khushu uh, uh, and your khushu is not hidden from me. How? He says, Inni la arakum min warai zahri. I see you behind me the way I see you in front of me. Now you tell me, can you see behind you the way you see in front of you? Because your eyes only allow you to see that. But he says, Allah, yakhfa, wallahi, he swears by Allah. He says, inni la araakum, inni la araakum, I see you, min wara izari, the way I see you in front of me, I see you behind me in the same way. Now you tell me, we can't see behind us because our basharīyat doesn't allow us, but the basharīyat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allows him to see that which we cannot see. So is his basharīyat the same as our basharīyat? Now, so that's when he's living. What about when he's passing away? You know, I read a lot of Ali Hadith and Salafi books. I'm a, I'm a free, unpaid scholar of the Salafi movement. I read so many books, so I know what their arguments are in this respect. They say, yes, when Rasulullah was alive, he could do things for you. But now he's gone, what can he do for you? He can't do anything because he is dead. He's of no consequence. On the issue of dead, somebody said... He is dead. He can't do anything. I said, are you sure he is dead? He says, I'm 100% sure he's dead. Because there is a, a narration of his dying. I said, what is the definition of death? Death is only a taste. Kullu nafsin zaikatul maut. It is a zaika. It is a taste. The definition of taste is something that comes and goes. So the real state is life. Death is only a state. Death is only a taste. What happens when that taste finishes? He reverts back to life. But what kind of life? Like this life? No, better than this life. But they say, when you leave this world, your amal finishes. Well, we say, if the amal of Musa salam doesn't finish, how can the amal of Habibullah finish? On the night of Miraj, the Prophet ﷺ said, I saw Musa Kalimullah. He was reading namaz in his grave. So tell me, if Musa Kalimullah can read namaz in his grave, carry on his amal in his grave, you think Habibullah can't do that? But the difference between Kalimullah and Habibullah is that Kalimullah is amongst those prophets who on the day of judgment, he will be saying, nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. So Kalimullah reads for his own nafs. He reads for himself. But the Prophet ﷺ does not read or do anything for himself. Why? Because where 124,000 prophets, where they will be saying, nafsi, our master will be saying, ummati, ummati, ummati. So tell me, in the grave, Rasulullah ﷺ, he says, Hayati khairul lakum, wa mamati khairul lakum. My living is good for you. My dying is good for you. So how can he benefit us in his grave upon this hadith? I will conclude my lecture so you can ask questions and answers. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Every Thursday night, every Thursday night, the namaya mal, the record, of good and bad of each ummati of mine is presented to me. Each ummati. And he says, when I look on the right side, 
If I see good deeds, Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah. Oh Allah, thank you, you have allowed my ummati to do good deeds. Whether we do good deeds and thank Allah or not, that is our short fall. But on our behalf, our Nabi thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you see the relationship? He thanks Allah on our behalf, every son. In my office, one day, a person came, uh, a, a, a Salafi Imam came, he said, how is it possible for the Prophet ﷺ to know each and every individual of you? How is it possible? And he said, are you saying that from now till the day of judgment, every child in the womb of a mother the Prophet ﷺ knows about? I said, this is a, not a normal, this is not a special thing anyway. Why? Because if you say that the Prophet ﷺ knows every child and that is a big thing, it's not a big thing. Why? Because even Adam alayhi salam knows every child that is to be born till the day of judgment. Even Adam alayhi salam knows every child that is to be born till the day of judgment. But he said, no, knowing them is one thing. Uh, knowing the name is one thing because Allah Adam al asma kullah. Knowing their name is one thing, but knowing their actions is another. So the Prophet sallallahu may know your name. He knows you as Muhammad, he knows you as uh, Nadim, or he knows you as this, that, and the other. But does he know about you? Is this possible? I said, yes. Why? Because there is a hadith in Muslim, narrated in Muslim, that on the day of Jiman, a Jahannami will be going towards Jahannam. A Jahannami will be going towards Jahannam. And he will be saying, Oh Allah, forgive me, Oh Allah, forgive me. And he will be going towards Jahannam. Suddenly, from behind, a voice will come. A voice will come, and that voice will say, Oh Allah, do not send this person to Jahannam. I wish to intercede on his behalf. And I will say, Who intercedes on his behalf? You know who intercedes? It will be the Hajri Aswad. The Hajri Aswad will say, Oh Allah, do not send this person to Jahannam because he has kissed me. Tell me. <laughs> How many billions of people, billions of people kiss the Hajar Aswad? What is the Hajar Aswad? It's a human being? Come on. It's a stone. But you kiss the stone and the stone does Shafa for you. So if a stone can recognize he who kisses a stone, you think it's difficult for Rasulullah to recognize his Ummati? Huh? That is why we may or may not kiss his stone, but we kiss our thumbs. This is the way of the Anyway, long subject, some other time. Let me conclude. The Prophet said, when I see your amal on the right side, Hamidullah, I thank Allah. And he says, sharran. And if I see that you have committed bad deeds in the week, Allah Akbar, whether you ask for mercy or not, he says, Astaghfartu lakum, I pray to Allah, oh Allah, forgive the sins of my ummah. <laughs> now tell me, if you say Nabi can't do anything in his, in his grave, is the Nabi going to do something for you? Is he going to do something for you? If you say he can't do anything, is he going to do... Even if he can do something for you, if you don't even believe in him, even if you don't, even if you don't respect him, you don't give him his due. Do you think he's going to do that for you? No. Those who love him, those who respect him, those who have that real love for him, he will do for them. Why? Because he knows that their link is with them. That is why the whole aqidah of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat, whether you talk of ilm al whether you talk of Hazin Nazir, whether you talk of his living, whether you talk of Salatu Salam, everything revolves around the living of Rasulullah So the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat believe that the Prophet وسلم, yes, in physical form, he is not before us. But just because he is not before us in physical form, does that does not mean he cannot benefit us. His benefit continues the way it continued for the Sahaba at that time. But his uh, physical existence was only so that he could give the physical book. But his benefit, which he has to give to people who are his ummati, 